I vow to all the seekers of truth. <coughs> As I have told you before, that these are special times. And times when we are very confused. We are confused because so many things are in the atmosphere. Moreover, there is a special urge to search the truth. This is a very special thing of the modern time that people want to search the truth. They think, perhaps, that there is something beyond that they have to see. They feel they are not satisfied with whatever they have. They feel whatever is going on in this world is not all right. Perhaps they feel that human beings are not on the right track that we have to take to something else, something different, something higher. But first of all, when we are seeking, we must understand that it should be based on the tradition of seeking. For example, when you see these lights here, you know that it was discovered gradually first few principles, then little more, then little more, till they discovered these lights for us. But in the seeking, today the problem is human being has become not independent but arbitrary. He has no relationship with the whole. And anybody who tries to find out a new method, a new idea, a, a new way, people jump at it. This is the character of the modern times. Also media and everybody tries to support anything new comes. In seeking also, it has happened. Whatever the ancient people the scriptures have found out for us is not to be wasted. We have to base our findings, our path on the same experiences that they have had and use them for our purpose is a sensible thing. Like a boy gets a lot of money, say from his parents, he uses that and then builds up his own business. Very rarely he throw away all that and start something new venture and end up into bankruptcy. This is one of the problems we are facing. So I have seen that people suddenly take to new methods. Like I was in Pune the other day and I met some very learned Sanskrit scholars. And I was amazed that they all were suffering from all kinds of diseases of a very serious nature. They said, we have a guru. Another said, he had a guru. I said, how is it you are suffering from disease? If you have a guru, at least your health should be all right, at least minimum of minimum. Oh, they said, no. This is something we are doing very serious uh, work. So what is that? They started giving me names, Aruno Pait, Taruno Pait, this, that. But they said that our Guru gives us a Shakti I said, what is all that? I've never heard it. In what book have you found it? Is it in Vedas? Is it in Puranas? Is it in the Gita? Or is it in the Bible or Quran? Where is it? Did Lhasa talk about it or Socrates? 
From where do you get this word Shakti Path? Suddenly, I've never heard of it. So they said about 60, 70 years back, there was a gentleman called Vishnupri. He has written a book, a book. And all this is based on that Shakti Path business. I said, I've never heard of this Vishnupri. And he started a new fad. And this fad we have accepted. Paying no attention to what Gita has to say, no attention to what Vedas have to say, no attention to what other scriptures have to say about your ascent. You accepted this gentleman out of the blue. Last hundred years in India, we have had such funny people. They produced books after books, even in English language. All these books were translated in English, which has no basis, no connection, no relevance whatsoever to the ancient books. I read a book by one German fellow who must have taken some, I don't know, ideas from half-baked personalities in India, somebody who knows a little bit of Sanskrit and lot of English or maybe something. He wrote such a funny book where he said the Kundalini is their stomach. And this fellow says, when the Kundalini is awakened, then you start jumping like a frog. Or you start making noises like a lion. I said, now are you going to become a frog and then an earthworm? All these funny ideas are worked out. Maybe it is an ego trip, or maybe it's some sort of a befooling going on. The other day only I met somebody in Germany. There were 30 people in a group and their so-called teacher came to see me and they all. And I said, what are you teaching them? He said, I'm teaching them prana moksha. In Sanskrit language this word means death. I was quite shocked. What is he teaching them? <laughs> I said, what sort of a prana moksha are you teaching them? He said, I circulate the air into my body and then I make the air go here and there. So I said, what, what difference will it make? If the air goes here or there or here or anywhere, what difference is it going to make? But he was quite confident about it. He said, you must give me more time and I'll talk to you about it. His Kundalini was all frozen, absolutely. He had no realization, nothing. And he was boasting as if he knew everything about it. I was amazed at his confidence, really. And I said, these 30 people tomorrow will be suffering from horrible diseases, or they might end up in the lunatic asylum. It may be some of the seekers might have reached a stage that they are so frustrated with all this nonsense that they might be wanting just to kill themselves. They might have joined <laughs> for this prana moksha. I can't understand how, why did they join this nonsensical thing. So it is. In India also we have such people who take to this. Even in Western countries we are finding all kinds of new things coming up. Like we have now, say, Christ came in. Now as soon as Christ came, there was an attack on Christianity. As I told you last time, Paul. Paul came to attack Christianity. Absolutely. He is anti-Christ now because he just neutralized Christ in his writings, when I first saw him there, I said, who is this Mr. Paul here? What is he doing? And he cannot understand the mystery of God. He cannot think what greatness God's powers are. Well, how can he describe he himself as epileptic? According to us, that means he was a possessed man. Not only epileptic, he had other problems. He had killed many Christians and suddenly he becomes a very nice man. Same with Augustine, he was another attack. Now thank God that Paul is exposed and now we have two types of Christians, those who believe in Christ and those who believe in Paul. You cannot intellectualize, no, you cannot intellectualize Christ. You cannot intellectualize God, you cannot. He is beyond your intellect, you cannot understand him through your intellect. If you have to understand Him, you have to become the Spirit. Christ has clearly said that you are to be born again. 
And when Nicodemus asked, how am I to be born again? I have to enter into the womb of my mother. Christ said, no. That what is flesh will produce flesh. You have to be born again by the Holy Ghost. If you remember, Christ was killed in no time. If was given time, he would have told you what Holy Ghost is. Holy Ghost is the Kundalini within. She is going to give you the second birth. It's a living process. And a living process that should take place spontaneously. All living processes take place spontaneously. It is not that you can make a seed sprout by taking out, pulling out its primules. You cannot force it. You cannot put some sort of a yoga system on that seed that it should sprout. It has to just be embedded in the Mother Earth and the Mother Earth has the capacity and it sprouts. So all these new ideas come in and for an intellectual, he being a right-sided person, it's a great thing to see something new. And that's why sometimes people of my age group here in England are quite shocked to see how things have changed in this short time, how people have taken to absurd things, why have they ac accepted this kind of absurdity. And even the law goes in their favor because law, law has to be democratic. It has to accept whatever people say. Tomorrow, if many people decide to commit suicide, the law will say, all right, you, by law you are allowed to commit suicide. What can the law do? They allow all kinds of nonsensical, perverted, uh, sexual behavior. And in 73, when I went to America, I told them there will be a horrible disease coming in which will stop all this nonsense. And they were very angry with me. Nobody would listen to me. But other guru said, it's all right. That's your culture. Do what you like. We have nothing to say. Only thing, as long as you give us money, we are satisfied. Nothing more is wanted for you to do. You do, that's your culture, this is our culture. Even lamas say that. Lamas, when they come down all the way from there, they are only interested in taking money from here. They said, that's your culture. This is our culture. As if Christians had a culture which was nothing to do with righteousness, nothing to do with virtue, nothing to do with purity. Was that an animal's culture that was preached here? But that's what people accepted because they just wanted your money. It's a spontaneous process. You cannot pay for it. And once you understand this simple point that you cannot pay for it, is a spontaneous thing. It is your own, it is within your being that this Kundalini resides. And it resides in such a way that it notes everything that you do. It's like a tape recorder. It's your mother. And she is never going to harm you. But she knows about her child. She is your individual mother. And she is the pure desire within you. All other desires are impure desires. It's an energy, an energy which is the reflection of the Holy Ghost because Holy Ghost is the energy of God which is all-pervading. This energy resides in the triangular bone. And the Greeks knew about it because they called the bone as Satan. This is all your own. You don't have to go anywhere else to find God. Let her have a chair. Get, get her a chair here. She wants to come closer to me. So it's all right. All right, please be seated. She is a born realized person. How are you? So, these great things are available to you at your command. You have got it. And the times have come. So many people have to get realization. But not through your mental projections. 
not through your understanding you can understand the miracles of God. You cannot. You must understand very humbly that we have to go beyond, we have to become the Spirit. As Krishna has said, Atman Nevatmane Krishna. That is, through Atma only the Atma will know. That is, the Spirit will know itself through the Spirit. It's a simple thing to be understood that we are not yet the Spirit and we have to become the Spirit. That's what Christ has clearly said. Because people did not become the Spirit, now they are challenging Him. They are challenging His miracles. To see His miracles, one thing is that you have to be the Spirit. Now all that is within you, in your own power, it's all there. You have to just get it awakened and you become that. Once you become the Spirit, you become the life and then you can give realization to other people. Now the people when they are skeptical and they start doubting, I think there's nothing to doubt. You are doubting yourself because you are not to pay anything here, you are not to do anything but to get your realization, that's all, it's very simple. Why should you doubt? Because your brain is such that you doubt the right and never the wrong. So please tell your mind that just now wait for a while, let me become the Spirit. Then the same mind will be surprised, the same mind will communicate to you what you have achieved and what you have done. But as a result of spiritual ascent, what do you get? That's the main point. What, what should happen? So the first thing happens to us is that we become, again I say you become on your central nervous system collectively conscious. That is on your fingertips you can feel the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. You can feel the centers of another person. On your fingertips you can feel it. You can know about your own centers you can know about the center of others. That is one thing that happens to you, that you become collectively conscious. I say you become, it's no certificate by anybody else, but you yourself can find out that a new awareness has come on your chakras and you can feel it. That you can feel what's wrong particularly in a particular place within your being, also you know how to cure it, how to put it right, how to make all right. This is the first thing you get as a knowledge of collective consciousness. Your attention becomes enlightened because you become aware of yourself and of others. Now this awareness is a very good word in English language, if you understand. Human beings are much more aware than the animals. Where? On the central nervous system. Whatever we have achieved in our evolution is on the central nervous system. So whatever has to happen to you has to be on the central nervous system so that you achieve the epitome of your evolution from amoeba you have become the human being and now you have to become the higher being, not a frog or an earthworm, but a higher being who can feel another personality and his, your own personality. And then you have to know how to cure it. What I do is not, it's just like a light which is enlightened, can enlighten another light. That's all, you are already and the another light gets enlightened. So your ego should not feel challenged at all. There should be no fear that you are obliged to me or there's some obligation on you, nothing of the kind. This is the first thing happens to you. Then the second thing happens that you become aware that you are a part and parcel of the whole. Because you start feeling another person within you. You start understanding another person within you, not mentally but on your vibrations. So you understand 
which part of your being is not all right and which part is all right. For example, if somebody gets cured through Sahaja Yoga and he tries to thank me for that or thank anyone for that, there's nothing to thank. Because who is the other? Supposing this hand is feeling the pain, the another hand suits it like that. It's doing no obligation on this hand. It's happening automatically because there is nobody who is the other. So this is the second thing happens to you, that you feel conscious, aware that you are part and parcel of the whole. Then you know the truth. What is the truth? The truth is that you are the light, that you are the spirit. Now many people see the light and they say, we are seeing the light, now we have become the light. If you become the light, do you see the light? You see the light when you are away from the light. If you see the light, then it is not that you have become the light, but you are seeing the light, that means it is away from it. So we must have a full idea as to what is the light within ourselves. When we have light within ourselves, we see ourselves clearly and others clearly, and understand ourselves and understand others. And in that light, if you have the knowledge how to cure, how to improve, how to cleanse yourself and others, then you are the light. And that's what exactly happens. Then the spirit is the source of compassion. And you become extremely compassionate and discreet because you know which person is all right, which person is not all right. For example, a person is there who may be at home, he's cheating and he says, I'm a great saint, how are you to find it? Only through vibrations because you become like a computer which is connected. If the computer is not connected, then it cannot say it is indiscreet. But once it is connected, all the programming is done in you, you start working it out and you know exactly what that sort of a person is. As soon as you know that person, you know what should be done about it. Even if the person is dead, even if he's far away, you can find out about that person. And also if he is a great saint, a great personality, you enjoy it. Even you enjoy the people who are around you, whom you have missed, you never knew about them so that first time the rapport is established between human beings of a very pure nature. Normally there is some lust, some greed, some sort of a relationship that exists. Here is a pure relationship of enjoyment. Every human being is a source of joy when he becomes a spirit. As soon as he becomes a spirit, you start enjoying him as a spirit and he also enjoys you as a pure spirit. There is no lust, no greed, nothing of the kind, nothing common, like two drunkards are great friendly people. One of them gives, gives up alcohol, then there are no, no friendship. Two nations will say, we are brothers, brothers, and when it comes to reality, you'll find they are the ones fighting with each other. It can happen to two own brothers born of the same parents, it can happen to anyone. But once you are born of your spirit, you feel the oneness that all cells belong to one great being, microcosm becomes the macrocosm and you do not feel that separateness from another personality as you all the time feel, you have fear, you have apprehensions, you are bothered. But once you become that, you trust and you know that another one is a great human being. Only the human beings are the ones who have created atomic bombs to kill each other. No animals have done like this. Only the human beings have a great capacity to destroy it. But all these ideas of destruction of others goes away and you think of constructing everyone into a beautiful way without aggressing anyone, without torturing anybody, without trying to show off. It's just automatically working. And this compassion is the compassion which doesn't talk. It's a silent compassion which emits from such a personality. 
And when it, when it emits, it acts, it works, it doesn't talk. Such a person, even with a glass, can make a person peaceful, can bring joy to that person, can reconcile many broken hearts, can do wonders, can cure lepers, can cure people suffering from horrible disease. Because joy, which we talk of, is, has got its own powers and one of the greatest powers of joy is that it is the truth and it is the compassion. It's the absolute, it is the absolute and that's how you do not have any more confusions in your minds because the relative world disappears and everything gets re related to the absolute that is your spirit. And this is what you are, you are the spirit, only thing you have to just become and that becoming is a very easy thing that should happen. Some people must have read some books where they must have heard that is not such an easy thing. You have to do lots of cleansing yourself and you have to uh, go to Himalayas or some sort of a Gobi desert to take your moksha. In any case, if you go to Himalayas or to Gobi desert, you get your moksha all right. There's no, nothing to <laughs> try anymore. But it is that whatever is vital, you have to get it easily. You breathe so easily, you digest your food so easily, you don't have to go to a guru or to anyone to get it. So whatever is vital has to happen easily and that's why you have to get it, very easily. Now you may say, why you, you are there, Mother? What, why, what are you doing there? If you have to get it, why not we get it direct? You cannot get it because it cannot talk. It does not have words and somebody he has to decode it for you. After decoding, you must, like scientists, accept me just as a hypothesis and then see for yourself if it is true or not. You should not just discard it because I'm saying so or you should not accept it because I'm saying so. But as scientists, keep your mind open and see for yourself it works, you must accept. If you are honest, you will. But if you are dishonest, you will not. Of course, this is not meant for frivolous people who want to waste away their life, who wants to go towards destruction. God is not going to fall at their feet. He silent. In a way, he does think. And you yourself go into this selection. You yourself are found out in this selection. So it is for you to understand that it is meant for true seekers, seekers of truth who are really seeking God and not for people who are just doing it out of fashion. I used to get some people because they couldn't get admission into some other lecture so they would come to me. But some of them would get realization despite that, just by chance or so, they got realization. But such people are not serious people, they do not develop their realization further and they end up with some problems and after one year they'll appear saying that I've got this problem and that problem. But this is a science of complete understanding of the divine laws, how they work out and once you know that, you become a master, master of yourself. So this source of joy, which is the spirit, must be achieved and must be enjoyed. If we do not become that, we have missed the real point, that's what it is. Now there are many people who also come down with new ideas, this is so, that is so, and, but one should understand that why do you want to represent anyone here? Why don't you become yourself? You need not represent some other cult, some other gurus, better be yourself. What have you got so far? It just takes a second for you to get realization. What is the need for you to represent some other people because you have paid some money there or because you are a member of some organization? You cannot be a member of Sahaja Yoga. You have to become, first you have to become a person with thoughtless awareness, which we call in Sanskrit Nirvichar Samadhi and after that you become a person endowed with doubtless awareness, which we call as Nirvichar Samadhi. This must be achieved, otherwise no use coming to surgery. Because we do not want just majority, nobody is fighting elections here. 
it is for your gain. If you do not want to achieve that state, no use being here because uh, it's just a waste of time for us and for you. You should just understand that this is your right to have it, you must get it and you must learn how to preserve it. And then you have to give it to others. You have to use it for helping others, for the emancipation of the whole humanity, for the saving of the whole humanity. There may be very few, doesn't matter, but they have to be genuine and truthful people. If you are interested in money, by getting some money in Sahaja Yoga, so there are some people we found, they came in Sahaja Yoga, wanted to make money out of it. Then we found some people who were having power gains. All this is not going to help us. What is going to help us is our genuine effort to know the truth. That's all. Otherwise, all other things are of no avail and no help to us or to you. That's the only thing that we expect you to have is a genuine understanding that it is what you have which we have to give you and which you have to take it and then give it to others what they have. It's a very simple thing like one light can enlighten many lights and all those many lights can enlighten innumerable lights and the time has come and there is no need to waste any more time about it. I hope today again we'll have many people get their realization. But you should not get lost. Realization, people get lost and I'm think, I think Christ has already described a parable where some seeds got sprouted and got lost. So that sort of a thing should not happen. We should have the seeds which become the trees. And you can, you are quite capable of it because you have been seekers of ages, not of today. So you must utilize what you have had today. You must cash it. It's your own. And as your mother, I'm very anxious that I better deliver the goods to the right people. Whatever belongs to you, I must give you. That's how I'm traveling. Today only I came from Austria and uh, I will be again going to Italy. And I find in Italy, special people are extremely sensitive, extremely sensitive. The municipality itself has come forward to help us and they are the ones who are paying for all our halls and for our advertisement. I don't know that is possible in English municipality. I don't know if they'll have that much of awareness here, but doesn't matter. Let's hope for the best, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, we, I think if you all people get your realization and establish it, I'm sure one day will come that we'll have to make this great country into Jerusalem. It's already prescribed by William Blake and he must have seen uh, the future of England as something great. That's why he wrote it because he was a very great seer. And we have lots of proof of that that he was a great seer and whatever he has, he has said has become the truth. I've been here in England for the last uh, 11 years now and maybe some more years I may be here, but then I have to go back to England. Before that, I hope in England we'll be able to establish something really substantial. May God bless you all. The question part we have decided not to have because it wastes your time. but. If you have any questions, you can write to me and uh, I'll answer that. That is much better because mostly these are individual questions, nothing collective. So it's better not to disturb everyone by questions. Uh, if you have any problems, you may write to me. You have got address and I'll definitely answer you uh, and I'll try to do whatever is possible. Now we will have the experience, which is a very simple thing, but we are not very simple, <laughs> we are quite complicated. So in a simple place like I went to Himalayas, where the uh, a foothill of Himalayas, very simple people from the village came and uh, it was said that uh, they call the Kundalini as the Devi, is the Goddess. The Goddess will be awakened 
They came from 20 miles walking down and in a valley. We had a program and thousands were there and they all got realization. They got established. I didn't have to do much about it. Very simple people. And traditionally they know what it is, waiting for this day. So because we are a little complicated, we have to help ourselves. And so it might take little more time, doesn't matter. We must have patience with ourselves. For this experience, I have to say that those who do not want to do it should go away because they shouldn't disturb others to be civil and kind to others, should go away and should not suddenly get up and walk off or suddenly open your eyes. If you want to go away, you can go. But if you want to stay, you're welcome to stay, but you have to uh, do the way we tell you. because it cannot be forced upon you. <coughs> no. You will all have to close your eyes, so you need not have your spectacles because it also helps your eyesight. And you have to take out your shoes because this Mother Earth helps us a lot uh, to suck out our problems due to the uh, matter. Our best is to take out your spectacles because your eyesight improves. Many a times it does help and moreover, the attention has to be withdrawn inside, but if your eyes are open, then the attention goes out. So best thing is to take out uh, your shoes and your spectacles and any, any sort of a tight thing which makes you, uh, I would say, a little uncomfortable, anything tight anywhere which makes you uncomfortable should be loosened, that's all. Oh, both the feet should be on the mother earth, straight like that. In case you are sitting on the ground, it's all right. But if you are not sitting on the ground, the best thing is to put both the feet on the mother earth. And the shoes, please keep them at the back. It would be better than to keep it on the sides, at the back. That you should not touch them. And now put your feet away from each other a little bit, parallel on the ground. At the very outset, I have to say that we have to be very pleasantly placed within ourselves because we are going to enter into the kingdom of God. So we should be very pleasant about it and we should forgive ourselves. We should not have guilt of any kind, of any kind whatsoever. This is one of the biggest obstacles of the West, that everybody has some sort of a nonsensical thing called guilt, which I do not understand. Even for a small thing we build up a guilt, because the norms are so strong here that people who do not do some small thing like wearing a proper shoe also feels guilty. It's very absurd to feel guilty when you are a human being. That means God has accepted you, chosen you, to be a higher personality. So you should not have any guilt at all. Apart from that, divine is the ocean of forgiveness and you cannot commit mistake in such a way that divine cannot forgive. So please, first of all, forgive yourself, have respect for yourself because you are the temple of God. Only the light has to be brought in, that's all. So you must have respect for yourself. Now the left hand is the power of your desire and Kundalini is the power of pure desire. So you put your desire on your hand like this towards me. That is expression, that is the expression that you are desiring 
to have in your realization, all the time. And the right hand has to be put on different centers to help the Kundalini to settle herself properly in these centers and to rise. And this you have to do. You have to raise your own Kundalini. I'll just tell you how it is done. It's very simple, where to put which hand. Now, in the beginning you just keep your eyes open and see that on the heart, first I'll tell you, I'll tell you later on, you just now see that on the heart, then on the upper part of the abdomen, then on the lower part of the abdomen, then going back in the upper part of the abdomen, then on your heart again, I will tell you one by one everything, and then here, this is the center which catches very much when you feel guilty, and it's still very bad today. So just here, at the back, from the front you have to take the hand and put it on the left hand side, like this, between the angle of the neck and the shoulder, and just place it a little bit behind, like that. This is very important center, and this is how I find people get spondylitis and angina, all kinds of diseases because they feel guilty all the time. There's nothing to feel guilty. Then you have to put your hand here. This is the center of Christ. And there's another one here at back. And then you have to stretch your hand and put this center of your hand on top of your head, here on the fontanel bone area, which we call as the Brahmaranda. And place it hard and move it clockwise like this, seven times. So this all we will be doing after closing our eyes, which is a simple thing. Only people make mistakes when they do not put their hands this way, but this way, in the same. The best is to do it in this manner. So, now all these centers we are trying on the left-hand side. <coughs> that one should remember. Not on the right-hand side. Every center I'll describe to you, and I'm sure we'll all achieve our realization. Now the left hand towards me, and the, both the feet on the ground. You shouldn't watch other. This is the first time you are going to see yourself, don't watch anybody else, only you have to watch yourself within. And please don't open your eyes. Keep your eyes shut, shut till I tell you. Now the right hand has to go on the heart. <coughs> now, here, this side, the spirit. You have to now ask me a very fundamental question. You can call me Shri Mataji or you can call me Mother, whatever you like. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this fundamental question with full confidence in yourself. Mother, am I the Spirit? Three times. Now, after this, a very fundamental question again uh, follows just after this, that if you are the Spirit, you are your own master. So you put your hand, see, on the left-hand side of your stomach, in the upper part. Here, you again ask me a question three times. Mother, am I my own master? Mother, am I my own guide? Mother, am I my own guru? Three times. Now, please take this hand in the lower part of the abdomen on the left hand side and press it hard a little with your finger. Lower part of the abdomen. Lower part. Now, this is the center of the true knowledge of the divine, the laws 
of the divine, the technique of the divine. The pure knowledge resides in this center. Now I cannot force you to ask this knowledge. So I would request you to say that you want this knowledge. So please say, Mother, may I have the pure knowledge, the true knowledge? You have to say this six times because this petal, this center has got six petals. Six times. May I have the true knowledge? May I have the pure knowledge? This will excite the Kundalini. Now raise your right hand on the upper part of the abdomen, on the left hand side. Press hard. Here, again, this being in the center of a master, a guru, principal center, which is created by all the great masters of the world, you have to assert to make a seat for the Kundalini to rise with full confidence in yourself. You have to say, Mother, I am my own master. Mother, I am my own guru. Ten times. Mother, I am my own guide. Ten times. Because there are ten principles of the master. Now, please raise your hand to your heart and press it there on the heart. Here resides the Spirit. <coughs> the truth is, you are the Spirit. So now you have to assert again twelve times. There are the twelve petals here. Twelve times you have to say, Mother, I am the Spirit. Have confidence in yourself. Please say. Mother, I am the Spirit. Spirit, believe in yourself. Have faith in yourself. You are the Spirit. Now please raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and the shoulder on the left hand side and take it little backward and hold it tight. Here is the center which goes into problem 
when you feel guilty. So please say 16 times, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Divine is the ocean of love, peace, graciousness. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. So please say it 16 times with full confidence that you are not guilty at all. Mother, I am not guilty at all for anything. Forget the past, forget the past be in the present. Close your eyes in a way that there's no pressure on the eyes. But close them fully. Sixteen times. If you still, if you still feel that you are guilty, you better punish yourself by saying it 108 times, that would be better than for some people who just indulge into this kind of a pastime for nothing at all. Mother, I'm not guilty at all. Now, please put your right hand on your forehead across and press it on both the sides. Here you have to say, how many times is not the point? Here you have to say from your heart, Mother, I forgive everyone. Mother, I forgive everyone from your heart. Those who say it is difficult to say are under wrong impression because it's a myth. Whether you forgive or don't forgive, it's a myth. On your forehead, please, not on your head, but on your forehead, on your forehead. From your heart, please say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Because if you don't forgive, you are playing into the hands of wrong people. It's a myth in any case. Now, take this hand on the back of your head. Just for your satisfaction, you may say that if I have done any mistake, O oh Divine, Please forgive me. Just for your own satisfaction you should say that. Because the Divine has already forgiven you. Now, please stretch your hand and put your palm on the fontanelle bone area, which is a soft bone in your childhood, and press it hard and move it seven times. Press it hard. The center part you press it hard. The center part. Slowly take down your hand. 
and slowly open your eyes. Now without thinking you have to watch it, just without thinking, you can do it, without thinking, there's no thought. Now, you may put on your glasses if you want to and without thinking you put your right hand like this, little higher and with the left hand just try to see if there's a cool breeze coming up, with the left hand. It's very subtle, it's sukshma, with the left hand. Put right hand like this, please. It's very, very subtle, very subtle. This lie, maybe about four inches, five inches. Here. Hmm. Now, put the right hand on top, again, okay, left hand towards me. There'll be some heat coming out, doesn't matter, let it come out. It's here. There's no thought in your mind, you can see there's no thought. Now raise both the hands and push back your head and ask the question, is this a cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Is this the all-pervading power of God? Is this the Brahma Shakti? Ask the question. Is this the power that does all living work? Just push back your head and ask. Now, put down your hand. See if you feel it in your hand. Like this, like this, open it up. There. And you are relaxed. There's a peace that is emitted. All right? Keep it up. Next step. See it next. One more thing I would like to tell you. because this is the only program we are having here. So I'm sorry I have to tell you all in one program. But you all have to come to our centers, we have them in every corner of England and also in London where you can meet people and find out more about it and master it. That's what you have to do on the follow-on. You must come and pay attention fully to it. It's not only when I come that you should come. They are all here who have known about it and they will just guide you, they are not going to dominate you, they are just here to guide you and once you know when you become masters then you can do the same because I am alone and how many people can I meet? I have to travel, I have to go in other countries also. So there are people who are quite equipped and they will tell you all about it in a very sensible way, just listen to them and they will guide you and you will reach your destination very soon. You need hardly a month to understand, hardly a month. Now, how to get yourself uh, into a complete protection? You have to give protection to your aura. So for that you have to raise your hand from this to this like that seven times. Let's do it. One. Two, three, this is the protection to our aura. Four, five, six, and seven. 
Now to raise your Kundalini, put your hand while sitting down. In front of you, just like this. <coughs> in front. And the movement of the left hand should be straight like that, watching the hand. And the right hand should be upward, forward, downward, backward. It's very simple, like that, clockwise. And this hand should move straight till you reach to the head. I'll tell you how. Now, let's start. It's very simple. Even a child can do it. Push back your head, loosen your shoulders, and give it a twist. And now tie it out. Let's do it again. Three times. See now, it's moving faster. Push back your head. Now, the Kundalini moves with it. Now, this is what the Christ disciples did, and people didn't understand it. And let's have it once more. And this time, three knots are needed on the head. So you fix up the Kundalini on top of your head. One, two, and the three. Now you feel it in your hands. See, now the first is in three. The face says, I start glistening. So glisten, glint comes in. And that's how you know you are a realized soul. And that's how I know I, you are my children. But you have to establish. You have to establish the experience. Even those who haven't got it doesn't matter. Everyone can get it. And you have to establish it. And for establishing, luckily today, it's very easy because we have here so many people who can tell you all about it. They have understood it fully. They know it. They know everything and they will tell you all about it. There's no secret in surgery. Everything is going to be told to you. May God. How many of you have felt the cool breeze on the head and as well as in the hands? If you have felt on the hands or in the head, please raise both your hands, both your hands. <laughs> All of you have felt it. <laughs> except for very few, all of you have felt, those who have not felt shouldn't mind it, it will all work out. Uh, there are people who can help you out. Thank you very much. May God give you wisdom and strength to establish yourself as great yogis. <laughs>